we're going to start Monday also. We I had to cancel the caterer. I canceled the caterer. With I had to cancel years. my food order. I had already placed a food order. I could not cancel my disposables, which I'm going to be billing to, to DIFTA by the time we start anyway, because I ordered eight cases of trays. These things don't come in five minutes. So I had to order them. And then they tell me, oh, no, 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 no. We didn't mean the 10th. Well, yes, you did. It says 10th on the email. No, 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 no. That's not how this works. So, but also uh, it was on channel in New York One. It was on, excuse me. It was on, it was on DIFTA's Instagram page even. The oh, seniors are all saying, but they say you're opening the 10th. They, 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 they only did that to have a voice before advocacy day to get us quieting down. It was, I'm very upset about the whole thing. Svetlana heard a whole earful from me yesterday and then tells me it's bad for my heart. I said oh. to her, no, 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 no. Us calling you is bad for your heart maybe, but no. <laughs> so so that's just, we need that well, during I'm the just RFP. I'm keeping too. my fingers crossed that they cancel out the whole thing because you got that email from um, Allison Nickerson from Live oh, On. Oh, you mean cancel out the RFP. So yeah. I, you know what? We're going to have to do this RFP sooner or later anyway. I know, so at least we'll I be. don't want, to be honest, I don't really, no, I'm not sure I want them to cancel it. I want them to post, to, to yeah, delay Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's what I mean. Yeah. Because yeah. to be honest, I already hired my grant writers. I already paid them. I don't really want to stop the whole thing. I just don't, I'd like a little more time. Although, how are we supposed to project all these things? It's so silly. I can't project how many seniors are going to come to the center until they start coming. Yeah, we right. have known right. so many people have passed away. We don't really know how many. We know no, some. Even how many are going to be comfortable with grab and go? How many are going to be comfortable with, with sitting down? It's a social experiment. And we're going to have to wait and see what, how well, that plays. Well, now out. it looked like the grab and go is definitely through June 30th. Is that what you saw? Which too? is ridiculous too. But what, do you, because, you know, that deadline they put on the letter last night, the grab and go is till June 30th. Really? And what, July 1st, you're going to cut everything? That's not how it, once they start, they can't stop it. That's ridiculous. Okay, they, ladies, we're going to get started <laughs> officially with the meeting. Um, Tanya, you see how our committee, our committee is a little different than the other committees. We're a little more <laughs> loose, you know, in terms of, you know, not quite so uh, tight. You started, the you program. mentioned the RFP, Mary. It's yeah, your yeah. Fault. <laughs> so um, we're going to officially, I'm going to officially call this meeting to order, 1040 a.m. Um, I just might go on the phone with you guys, just to let you know, I might sign off. And Is there a phone number to call? Yes. Okay, and then I'll take care, do that in a few minutes. On that, uh, on that link I sent to yeah. you. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Okay. Um, but, you know, thank you for updating us on the RFP. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, let's do introductions first before um, we get started officially. Uh, I'm, as you all know, Mary Anderson, chair of this committee. Um, Yosef? Sure. So, hi, I'm Yosef Kalinsky, assistant chair. Happy to be here. Glennis? All tab, Zoom webinar. Hi, everyone. Zoom this webinar. is Glennis Aquino Gill. Thank you for joining us. Richard, welcome aboard. Thank We're you. We're doing introductions. I'm Richard. <laughs> Member of the committee. Um, Tanya? Hi, I'm Tanya. I'm a board member, Community Board 12, and I'm here to present. <laughs> Ilana? Ilana, Executive Director of Riverstone Senior Life Services. And Shirley. Hi, I'm Shirley Gottman, Director of Mariah Senior Center. And Lilliette. Lilliette? Can you hear me, Mary? Can you introduce yourself? Liliette Lopez, Night Connects Outreach Specialist. Okay, I think I got everybody. Okay, um, so as Tanya said, she's going, she's here to present, make a presentation on the Washington Heights Noise Task Force, um, which I've been a member of also for a while. So this has nothing to do with the community board. It's completely a separate entity uh, um, task force. Um, but some some of the uh, members of the community board are uh, members of this task force due to the nature of 
who we want, you know, who Tanya and others that formed this task force wanted to have involved. And Tanya will explain all that in her presentation. Okay. You're on. Um, I will go ahead. I'm going to make this quick because I know you have a very important rezo to deal with today. So, and Mary, keep me on track. If I'm, if I'm lagging, you know, just say, speed it up. Yeah, we'll do. Okay. Okay, so as Mary said, this is the Wahi Inwood Task Force on Noise. Um, we uh, had our first meeting back in November. Um, we started because we had a, a very rough summer in 2020. As many of you who live around here know, um, we had a public hearing at the community board on August 4th of last year, where we had over 400 people attend from what I'm told, and including people from New Jersey and other places. Um, and uh, from that, you know, at that at the hearing, I thought it would be a good idea to start a task force of some sort to sort of bring people together from the community to the elected officials to the city agencies to sort of try to figure this out and come up with some solutions. Um, and uh, the community really wanted this to be community led, as Mary said, they wanted this to to be something that was really grassroots that didn't to have any governmental or any kind of political ties they wanted the voice be theirs and so that's really what happened we we took a few months and we formed it um we'll talk about the configuration um uh, later in just a moment and why we chose the people that we chose um i, I don't want to go too much into this but we do have uh some scholars on our task force including people uh, a scholar from Columbia University who is in the Mailman School of Public Health. Um, and they've been doing a lot of work on, this, on the research side in terms of really helping to educate not only the task force, but our stakeholders about what noise is and the impacts it has on our community. And noise, of course, the, the, the regular definition is just unwanted sound. But as we know, it's deeper than that. It has significant health impacts um, from uh, cognitive impairment, sleep disturbance, uh, uh, cardiovascular issues. Uh, um, we, people, some people can experience tetanitis, uh, tinnitus, and we also have um, mental health impacts uh, when people are not able to get sleep. We've had veterans contact us and say, you know, this is really impacting my PTSD. So it, it impacts people on many, many levels in terms of our health and our mental health. And so we consider this a public health issue. It's, it's more than just a quality of life issue. Um, and, the, and the issues that the task force is concerned with include, uh, you know, these environmental sources. Uh, mostly what we're dealing with in our community are, are things that are community uh, have a roots in the community, such as neighbors, radio, television, bars, restaurants, uh, portable music players, fireworks, dirt bikes, those sort of things. So that's what we're concerned with. As we talked about, our, 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 com our uh, community board district had the highest number of noise complaints in all of 2020. Uh, and up until this date, but I, when you look at it further on, we still had the highest number of complaints. But the Maddenboro president gave us this data from January 1st to August 3rd, showing that we had the highest number of complaints out of all the other community board districts in Manhattan. And as you can see, the numbers there, I won't repeat them, but you can see that we had high, high numbers of, of across the board. Um, Tanya? Yes. I'm sorry. Sorry to interrupt. If everyone else on the meeting could please mute themselves. Um, we're getting a little feedback from someone who isn't muted. Uh, sorry about that, Tanya. Thank you. Oh, no worries. Sure. And so as we know, this, is, this has implications. We had a fire that was caused by illegal firework activity on Nago Avenue in Inwood that burned out this building. So it can be deadly as well. Um, we will skip this part. Uh, but as, as we know, we had a public hearing, as I said, on August 4th. Um, and that sparked our task force. We have a mission statement. Um, I'll be happy to put that in the chat. So if people want to review that, they can on their own time. Uh, we, uh, the task force was formed, basically we wanted to make sure on several fronts that we were representing the community. We want to make sure, first of all, that the community that Washington Heights and Inwood were uh, at least somewhat equally represented. So we do have 13 members who live in or work in Washington Heights. We have nine live in or work in Inwood. Uh, we also want to make sure this, this 
that we represented various constituencies impacted. Mary is on here because she's the chair of, of, of aging and she also uh, has done a lot of work around disability. And we wanted to make sure that, that the, uh, the elderly and disabled are represented. We also have members of tenant associations from schools, small businesses, youth, community organizations. And of course, as we said, we have several academic experts um, who are part of this task force. We want to make sure it was diverse. So, you know, people, sometimes people say, well, this is just an issue that is from people who are newly arrived in our community or what they would call gentrifiers, but that's not true. We have people from all segments who are concerned and impacted by this. Um, nine people identify as self-identify as white, six as Hispanics, four as black, one self-identifies as Middle Eastern on our task force. They have an average number of 22 years in the community. So these people are not, they know the community very well. We have people who have been here for 50 years, down to maybe two, okay? So we have different perspectives and we have 20, 21 total uh, members of the task force. Um, we have met, we started meeting, like I said, in November, um, and we have met with all of these different organization, uh, uh, ag city agencies, um, as well as these elected officials. Um, and, um, you know, it's been very helpful. We are extremely thankful to them for coming to the table. Uh, we've learned a lot in this process and from them, and they've learned a lot from us. And we've been able to bring these organizations, these city agencies together to the table to begin to do something, coordinate and collaborate together and talk about their role and what they can do together to help address this problem. And so we're extremely grateful to these people. So again, if, if they're listening or their people, thank you so much for attending and being a participant in this process. Um, we have a couple of findings and I just want to just go over uh, quickly some of them. Uh, we know that noise is a, is a public health issue. We have found that to be the case. Uh, we don't need to argue that point. Um, we know that a lot of this activity that is going on is either again, already against city rules or regulations or outright illegal. So, you know, whether people should or should not do it is not an issue. Uh, we also found that there is a lack of clarity among city agencies around their roles and the boundaries. Who do we go to when there's a problem, depending on the type of noise, and who do we call? A lot of community members are confused. And so we have found that that has been a, a, a major concern. Uh, we also feel that they need there needs to be better coordination and collaboration between city agencies. Um, but we also know that, you know, even though some a lot of these agencies do lack resources, that is a real concern. And we would like to help work with them to advocate for more resources, but there are things that they can do that don't require additional resources. Um, and we also know that uh, the issue of culture has been used um, very divisively in this in this discussion. We're, we're not concerned about culture. We're, you know, this is not, we're not, we're concerned about community and our community being able to live, be healthy and thrive. And uh, as I said, this is a diverse group of people um, who are concerned about this issue. Okay. Um, uh, so before I go into next steps, um, we, I want to, I did put in the chat our recommendations, but I will call it up. I will stop sharing here uh, to call up this document so that I could just go over just a couple of things very quickly. Uh, let's see here. Sorry, you know, you think you have something up and it's not up. So give me one second. Okay, okay apologies. Now I'll start sharing my screen again. Okay, so some of these, can people see that? Okay, so one of the things that we wanted to do was start, uh, we wanted the mayor's office to really create a, 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 basically a chart so that people can understand what city agencies are responsible for what when it comes to noise violation enforcement. We feel that's really important to make it easy for, you know, the elderly, anyone who might have concerns that they find it very easy to find someone to, to contact 
um, to, to, you know, uh, when they're experiencing difficulty. We also wanted the fireworks task force that the city started to begin its work earlier. Right now they started a, 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 a more moral uh, and Memorial Day, and we wanted to start in May 1st, because as we know, the fireworks last year started early uh, in May, and we feel that they should begin their work in terms of targeting fireworks suppliers and distributors um, much earlier. Um, and so that's one of the things that we're asking for. Um, we're asking for a number of things in terms of uh, uh, measuring noise. So we're asking for the police department to be equipped with sufficient decibel readers, particularly all community neighborhood sector police officers be trained and have access to these decibel readers and have them on them. Um, and uh, we also um, want to update the noise code. The city noise code hasn't been updated since 2007. And, and this task force is currently working with uh, council member Mark Levine and, and DEP to, to see, to move along this process of, of updating the noise code. We also wanted to establish an office. We thought it would be a good idea to establish an office similar to the commissioner of the New York City Office of Nightlife. We want to have an office that deals with quality of life issues where uh, people can, where we can basically all the city agencies can, can coordinate on solutions and address issues that come up, and, and the public have a place where they can go and 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 you know bring concerns because right now it's so many different agencies working in silos dealing with different aspects of this, and it's really not a a a, a, a main uh, a contained space where this work can happen and we feel that it should be more organized, more formal and uh, place. And we think that we would like the city to consider uh, launching such an agency. We want 311 complaints audited and analyzed because right now we, we noticed that the 311 complaints are closed out immediately, uh, even before even uh, in investigating, they'll be closed out in seconds. And so we want to, to, to change that process. Um, and so, you know, those are some things. Um, we also, uh, you know, want to hold a series of conversations. Uh, we want to work with our elected officials, community organization, even this community board to, to sponsor those. Um, but I'll leave it there. Um, I did put it in the chat um, so that people can, can see all of the recommendations that we have, our next steps, uh, uh, just so you all know, um, we are going to continue to push uh, for the enactment of these recommendations. We are, you know, going to continue our advocacy there and continue to meet um, to go over progress on these issues. So the work of the task force isn't done, but um, we're grateful to be to the, at this point. And like I said, we had a lot of people at the table to help us better understand this issue. And through this understanding, we were able to come up with these recommendations that we know are, are feasible um, and um, we would like uh, those, those recommendations to be enacted. Any questions? Tanya, I just want to comment that um, the only thing in the chat that's appearing at this point is how to contact you. Oh, okay. Let me add it again. Okay. There's a file. I oh, see it. I, saw, I see the see file. The, I oh, have okay. it. All right. There's a it's file the first there. One. Mm -hmm. It says noise task force official and then it I don't have it either. Okay, well I'll send it again. I'll I'll paste it again. Uh just one moment. Okay, people see it now. So I put it through again. It's a file. Maybe I don't know how to see a file, but I don't see it. If you go to the chat. I'm in the chat. Okay, um, it because yeah, it says to all panelists and attendees. And so I put, it's a, it's a PDF. You don't see it? I don't see it. Yeah, either. it's, yeah, it's but, not coming through for me either. Hmm. Uh, I have it. I, I'm going to incorporate it into the minutes okay. as much as I can. Okay. 
great. Yeah, apologies. I don't know why it's not appearing for some people. Yeah, this Zoom sometimes does weird things. Um, Maybe it depends which kind of device you're on, perhaps. It could. Um, yeah, I just didn't want to, because I know we're short on time, and I didn't want to go through and read all of the the recommendations, but... Um, okay, so it'll be in the minutes. So yeah, and I, I will send out to everybody anyway. Yeah. Okay. And that's fine. But if you, if anyone has any questions, you know, I'm happy to take them. Like I said, we are, um, we're grateful for Mary and her participation in this. Um, we feel that the voices of our, our older uh, residents are, it's very important, those who are disabled um, and <laughs> how they're impacted by this. We have someone on our task force, for example, who is, has hearing loss in one ear and, and how all of the noise makes it impossible. They're also a business owner. So they make it impossible for them to like be able sometimes to hear because of all of the noise, the dirt bikes running, zipping by and all the fireworks that were that going off. It, it really is, is, is a serious situation. And we are, you know, it, it saddens me when it's just reduced to just people complaining because that's not what this is. It, it's real and it has real impacts on our community, especially in Washington Heights and Inwood, um, because we have a dense, a very dense community. So people are living closely together. And so noise has a, an even greater in, impact when we have dense communities like that. And this is all, and we're also gonna be releasing a full report, which will contain everything, names of the task force members, all of our findings in terms of the academic side, the research has been done. It, it'll be a full report. We're gonna come out with that uh, next week, um, but, this is just, you know, a, a preview of, of some of the things that we have discovered as part of our process. Great. So, Tanya, are you ready for questions? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to go by the uh, hands that are raised. Uh, Yosef, you have your hand raised? Yeah, no, I'm just going to say thank you. Um, and just to share with everyone here that Tanya's put in, I don't even know, countless hours into this and she has a lot more to say even on the topic and we just only hit you know the highlights here but to realize that this is a major issue in the community and and just how else can we support you and your work um that's that that's basically my, my my main comment and question yes encourage all of the city agencies to enact our recommendations <laughs> you know uh you can write them send them emails call them you know, really impress upon them that you've seen the recommendations that you would like for them to to enact them. Because at this point, we can talk. And, and like I said, we've had many conversations. And for some of the agents, we've had multiple. We've had them at the table multiple times. Um, but it's time for us to do, it's time for action. And, and, and as I said, there are things that can be done. And there are some agencies that are doing some things. Like I know the NYPD has really stepped up their confiscation of these dirt bikes, some of these illegal dirt bikes. Uh, they have, I've seen them stepping up. And I know that the 33rd Precinct has done some joint operations with the EP um, already. Um, and uh, I know the 34th said last night at the uh, Public Safety Committee meeting that they're uh, are going to be meeting with DEP next week um, to begin to plan some joint operations uh, for the 34th and 34th precinct. Uh, there's some forward movement on that. Um, and, I, and we had a meeting with the Parks Department yesterday in the NYPD um, to come up with a plan to address the issues in our parks. Because as we know, um, our parks were overtaken by un unlicensed, unpermitted, excuse me, parties, uh, alcohol and other drug use and things like that. That And people live near those parks. Our parks are beautiful. Um, and we want them to be able to enjoy them, but we also want people who live near them to be able to, to not, you know, be able to sleep and work. Um, okay, so, so let's move on to the... Uh, are there any other committee members that have questions? Welcome, Maria. Thank okay. you, Tanya, for the great presentation and all the work that you put into this. Thank you, Glennis. Okay, we have um, other folks who have questions. Um, I have Marielle Ali on the, on the chat, well, on the committee, on the, uh, the participants also, and she has her hand raised. Mar Marielle?
Marielle? Hello, can you hear me now? Yes. Ah, wonderful. <laughs> um, good morning, everyone. And thank you, Tanya, for the presentation. Um, I, I did join a little bit late, so apologies if you did already uh, explain this or talk about this. But I just wanted to ask uh, if the, uh, the task force is uh, leveraging the information uh, you know, on the kind of board stat and uh, Beta NYC. So, and I think you had attended one of those trainings. I think you and I were on that together. Um, and if you are, I would love to hear how the, the task force is doing so. Thanks. Sure. Yes. Um, and so, um, as I said, the Madam President was very, it kind of kicked it off by giving us all, all of the data up to August 3rd of 2020, showing the patterns of, of noise complaints, 301 noise complaints from all of the community board districts in Manhattan. So that was very helpful because we did use that to show, look, our community specifically has a real problem and it's worse than all of the other community dist board districts. And we need attention to this matter. Um, so it's been very helpful. We, we also have had Beta NYC at our meeting a task force meeting with all of the other city agencies to talk about ways that we can uh, better uh, utilize the data and also change, integrate more into the, the data system so that it captures a more of, of, of what is happening in the community. For example, a lot of the DEP uh, noise complaints, they don't get captured in, in a lot of the regular noise complaints. That's a, like a separate system. And so we're talking about how can we integrate like DEP noise complaints with the NYPD noise complaints. Uh, and and there, you know, there are other problems with the system in terms of, you know, lack of being bilingual in terms of being able to, you know, of uh, file complaints. It, it, it's a lot of problems. So we have had them at the table and we, we are continuing that conversation in terms of how we can improve that system. But boards that is important, but a board that pulls from 311 data. So uh, boards that, of course, would be improved once the 311 data itself is improved. But boards has been, for me, has been invaluable. I, I go to it a lot. To, you can search by location. You can search by a building. You can search by, you know, a, a block. You know, there are many things you can do. You can search by specific types of noise complaints. So the community, you know, this is a tool that's out there and available to people to use to see where problem areas are in their community. Certainly, thank you so much. And thank you for putting uh, the link in there. <laughs> you're, <laughs> Great you're resource good. for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Dr. Gary, welcome. Yes, hello. Hi Gary. You're on. I'm just uh, fixing my hair. Hi. <laughs> uh, thank you for uh, letting me speak. I guess you could see me. How about my face? Can you see my face? I don't yes. know. But I can't, you could see my face, but I can't see myself on the screen. Well, yeah, I can see your, you know, your picture. But... Yeah, my, see your picture. picture. Yes. my picture of me and my wifey? Or yes. my... Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I, I just, I'm always so confused why in the time of COVID where we can't actually all actually see each other sometimes to speak, like at the general meeting when they don't let me speak, but I'm not gonna get into that. I'm, I just wanted no, to- Let's say, get back uh, to the, the reason you raised your hand. <laughs> oh, I raised my hand and I lowered it, but it was already raised, but I'll, I'll take the opportunity to speak. I actually, I'll wait till the part where you guys are talking about the seniors going back into the, uh, have you, I'm sorry, I'm late, but are you guys talking about uh, trying to open up the senior centers? No, this is about this is the presentation of the task force, uh, the okay. noise, so, noise I, task force. I thought I saw on the agenda something about something. Uh, you did. Uh, That's the next um, discussion. Okay, so I'll I'll wait till that. I'm sorry. Okay, so just lower your hand. I did. I, I thought I did it. Oh, it's okay. Lowered. Oh, I now it says raise hand. There you go. You got I'm it. Gonna... Oh, my bad. I'm dyslexic, so. Uh -huh. 
And Mary, I'm going to put in the chat an uh, article that was done on on the the recommendations, and it does contain. They put the full list too, so I'll put that link. So if anybody is interested in reading yeah. that news article, they can. Yeah, I saw um, the patch article. That was, yeah, that's uh, the one I was referring yeah, to. Yeah, that was great. It looks like uh, the, they they published a whole list of all our recommendations. So thank you. Okay, Cheryl Miller. Yes. Good morning, Welcome. everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Hi, Tanya. Hi, Good Cheryl. Morning. Hi, how are you? Uh, I'm just giving my kudos to Tanya. I've been, I was on the meeting last night and traffic and transportation. And I want to just give her my full support. Um, you know, there's certain things I can't do. Tanya knows, but um, I'm here to give my full support of this task force and all the hard work that Tanya's put into it. Um, this is really, 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 really needed in this community. Um, this is our community. This community belongs to everybody. This is a diverse community. It doesn't belong to one uh, people. It belongs to all of us. This is a very diversified community. And like as Tanya said earlier, there's many of us, I've been here almost 15 years already. And there's people here 40, 50 years. I have neighbors that have been here 40 years, 50 years. Um, and I know, and I'm a senior, and this is greatly affecting my health. I mean, greatly affecting my health. I already have health issues. So um, we need to send a clear and present message that um, this is not gonna fly in Inwood and Washington Heights. This is not party central up here. This is not um, the Indy 500. Uh, this is our community and everybody has the right to sleep and enjoy, uh, their apartments. Thank you again, Tanya. Thank you, Cheryl. Yeah. And I wanted to say it's really the task force. I mean, you know, these are all of the other 20 folks. They have been incredible. Like this is a, a collective, uh, uh, achievement in terms of them, you know, their community residents, just like you and I, and all of us, and they've had to devote a significant amount of time so far to meeting and, and, and engaging and doing this work. So I, I, you know, this is actually the work of not myself, but the task force and all of the members there. We have, like I said, we have some small business owners. They have been facing their own challenges, yet they have been lending their voice to this effort. Um, and I want to thank them. I want to thank everyone who's been involved. Like I said, I can't wait to, you know, put out the full report to, have, to thank them in there, you know, list their names and thank them for all their work so far. Um, and they've come up with it. They came up with these wonderful ideas in terms of these recommendations you know uh, we met and we hashed that out and I, I and, you know it was their idea you know their old their ideas so you know I'm here speaking on behalf of it but it, it, it's it's a, it's an effort a collective effort of all 21 people and I want to thank you know the academic uh, members uh, and the advisors um, who have really helped us to understand the issue of noise um, help us understand what studies have been done, what has been proven about the impact of noise, and who have introduced us to new technologies to, that can help us to measure noise on a community level. Um, they've been incredible. And you, Tanya. I want to move on to a couple of other, I just want to find out who, there's a couple people on phones and I want to just oh, figure sure. it out. Hold on a second. Um, so when I was speaking at general session, Who's on the 914 number? 914-960? If you can unmute yourself. Let's see. Hey. Hey, that the 914 number is Alana Dunner. Sorry? 914 number is Alana Dunner. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, Richard. The 914 number that you just asked about, uh -huh. that's Alana Dunner. From oh, okay. okay, thank you. And there's a 917 number also. Let's see, 917, who's on 917? 917826. 
of those might one of those might be Maria Luna. Um, I think you're she's right. Saying, you're she's right. in the chat and she's saying yeah. that she can she can't see us but she can hear us. Got she's it. on the phone. Okay. So I'm pretty sure the 917 number is Maria. Absolutely, you're right. Okay. Thank and I you. just put the link to the chat uh, to the patch article in the chat so people can access that if they want to. And it has the full list of recommendations as well. Perfect. Okay. If there are no other questions, which it doesn't seem like there are, Tanya, I want to thank you so much. Thank you. This is what your fourth committee that you're pres <laughs> presenting at, number yeah. five coming on tonight. Yeah. But I appreciate your per perseverance with us and um, certainly look forward to. Uh, and thank you. Good Mary. outcomes. Good outcomes, which, you know, I think we're all looking forward to that. And, um, you know, seems like it's beginning to look a little bit hopeful. Yeah. Then thank you, Mary. Thank you for being a but part of The fireworks of this. have already begun. Yeah. Okay. And that's, yeah, that's, that's yeah. why we said start their process earlier. You know? Tanya, can you, I'm sorry, well, can you email me? You don't have to email the whole group. Just email me um, separately the, the full PowerPoint so I can incorporate as much as I have. We'll I'm do. just Kalinsky at yu.edu. Okay, got it. Okay. okay, I will do that as soon as I get off of here. Thank you. Okay. All right, thank you, everyone. It was okay, nice thank seeing you. Tanya. you You're welcome to stay on because, you know, we're going to have this other uh, discussion. Oh, yes, a senior one. Yeah. Yes, I definitely want to. Yes. Okay. All right. Senior centers, we need them open. <laughs> okay. So um, many of you got the updated uh, version of the... Uh, well, actually, I put a comment on the um, agenda uh, and the links when I sent it. Uh, when I sent it out, there are people on here who did not get that information. But just to give you a little bit of background on this discussion, um, it's, I have discussion of a possible reso addressing the need to reopen the senior centers immediately. Um, I don't know how many of you know that Gail Brewer has been kind of bouncing around the city to a few senior centers to have a rally slash um, help me out. Um, um, media, uh, what am I looking for the word? I've lost the word. Advocacy and more. Yeah, but I'm saying the rally, but also a media involved. You're person. saying it. Social media. No, live media. News. <laughs> huh? Anyway. Maybe, maybe anyway, you just call it a the, media, pre media huh? presence. One, one of the, one of the uh, places that um, she opted with actually, uh, you know, being invited uh, to have this rally was at the ARC Senior Center on 174th Street near Broadway. Um, two days ago, day before yesterday, right, Richard? Okay. Uh, which I was at since I live close and I'm also interested in getting these senior centers reopened because of the issues that are going on with the seniors. So Gail, talked to me for a few minutes, you know, at the end of the, that rally and asked if we had thought about doing a, a resolution to, you know, encourage the mayor and the mayor and DIFTA and everybody else to uh, get, try to get these senior centers reopened quicker, like now, because of all that's going on with the seniors. Uh, in terms of social isolation and, you know, food desert and, you know, not being able to, you know, have access to healthy foods and exercise and socialization, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So since Fern Hertzberg was there, since she's the director of that center and Richard Allman was there as well, since he works with Fern, um, mentioned it to them and, you know, they certainly thought it was a wonderful idea. And of course, Fern being Fern and Richard being Richard, they've already 
come up with a few ideas, but I wanted to just throw it out there if people think that this is an important thing to do. Yes. Just, just speak out. <laughs> I hear yes. one yes. Yes. And it's not Maria, it's Carol. <laughs> ah, Carol. Okay. I'm at a different uh, location. That's why you didn't recognize the number. No I don't problem. see how it's, it's a great idea. And by the way, they came to Dykeman before they went to ARC. Uh -huh. So we had a little input in it. And they actually did something quite clever. They took a picture of uh, a, a one woman sitting there alone wrestling with the domino table. But anyway, um, yes, I think it's a great idea. I don't see how it can how it can be a detrimental effect to you. I mean, what's the downside of it? I can't think of anything. Right. Um, the other thing is that, um, you know, the it was press conference was the word I was looking for. Um, yeah. That press conference at ARC was on oh, channel 11 and channel two that I saw that evening. Uh, and one of Fern's clients- You love it when my dad's dad. You love it. Julie? Oh, hold on a second. <laughs> Hi. Is that that baby you're talking to? <laughs> um, anyway, uh, one of Fern's clients was very, very well-spoken and outspoken, has been a member of that uh, center for over 40 years, she said. And she was featured on both of those channels um, because she was so well-versed in what she was saying and, you know, from the heart, you know, and Gail was, everybody was so impressed. So she was actually the, the focus on both channels that I saw, so. Good. Uh, we, the Is there anybody on this call that thinks it's a terrible idea to do this? I mean, I don't think it's a terrible idea. I worry. Um, I'm worried about the idea, but that doesn't mean we won't move forward. I mean, we are going to start doing grab and go. The, the DIFTA has authorized grab and go. Mm -hmm. We have to submit certain, you know, papers and so on, but grab and go looks like it's going to get started within the next couple of weeks. Okay. So that's Richard. the beginning. Okay. And, I, and I think, you know, I think they want to see what will happen with grab and go? Will infections go up? If not, then they'll open up the next level. I think it, it makes sense to do it slowly. To me, it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, if I may just to speak to that a little bit. I mean, I, I have seen the resolution that's in Mary's hands and it's as much as it's advocacy for opening senior centers, it's advocacy for involving senior center providers in a planning process. Both of those pieces are in the draft resolution. And I think it's sort of, let's get this stuff going. And I think the consciousness that Alana brings is part of that. Okay. Alana's saying that they do have a plan in mind. Is, is that uh, right? Alana? That's what I'm hearing. Surely chime in. Um, you know, we just got noticed this morning, yesterday, whatever, um, that grab and go, we have to submit forms. Grab and go looks like it's going to get going. And I think there's some yes. centers that are starting on Monday. Um, so that's, that's the beginning of this opening, the grab mm -hmm. and go. And that makes sense to me that that's how it should start. Okay. Anybody else? Well, uh, I, I think I'm interpreting that um, that maybe the resolution is ill-timed. Is, is that something that you're thinking, Alana, that they're doing the grab and go and they do have the idea to see how that goes? Um, uh, no, I, I don't with? think it's, uh, I think it can hurt, certainly. It, it can't hurt. So you're, you're thinking that you're, we're not being pushy. Is that the... No, I think it's fine. I, I, yeah, no, I think we should do the resolution. And especially as Richard said, we haven't been part of this process, which is crazy. 
but that's another story. Right. Have other community boards and other city agencies written resolutions? In other words, where are we in that process? Richard? Probably leadership. I don't, I don't know statistics on that. I know, I know Manhattan better than I know the other boroughs. And I don't think we would have heard from Gail Brewer if there were 11 other community boards already out there on this. Um, the other thought I'd add just into the discussion that's happening, I get the sense that all everyone who's been involved with senior centers or most of us has had a sense that this would be gradual. Um, and that even before we got the grab and go notices, that's the kind of thing that made sense. My own sense is that something like a full opening is quite a ways away, but those steps need to keep happening. And from my perspective, there needs to be a push to do that. You know, and that's the thing that Gail had indicated also that, you know, it would give more clout to what she's trying to say and tell because she, what she's hearing, you know, what she's being told from the mayor um, and, and other people is that, and, and is that, you know, they're working on it. Well, working on it could take a year. Okay. But these seniors have been already more than a year. Uh, yeah, 14 months without being able to attend their precious senior centers that they've been going to for 40 years. Um, and, you know, it's a part of their life and they need that. They really need that because there's there's so much depression and, uh, you know. But we can't forget that, you know, a lot of our members have died. Right. And and we have to be careful. I don't want to just say open up. Uh, that makes no sense to me. I wouldn't want to just go there myself to just open mm -hmm. up and get the whole thing. We have to be very careful and do it in very steps. So, so wait, so let's talk to that for a second, Ilana. Uh, are there any protocols that we would say you can only come into the center if you've been vaccinated? Now, is what else can we put in place to make sure that it's safe for those that are coming back? Well, Yosef, I think it's a really important question. I don't know what we're allowed to say in terms of you must be vaccinated or if you're not vaccinated, go to this side. And if you're vaccinated, go to that side. I think there's going to be a lot of litigation around this. Yeah. I worry about one of my um, staff members in our memory center who has very close contact with people is not getting vaccinated. And she's a fantastic worker, but I don't know what I'm going to do with her. I don't know if I can say, I'm sorry, you're losing your job. Uh, but I certainly want to, wouldn't want to bring, send my relative to- No, suffer. there's two There's two different things. I agree with you. There's a lot of legal things. And I'm dealing with some of the stuff on the university side. There's one thing to, to whether you can, what you can tell a worker, my understanding is you can't mandate it. Um, but exactly. you can, you can- in terms of people coming into your domain, right, into your senior center, you can, you can. I don't know, again, you have to check out the legalities, whether you can tell someone they can't come in, but you could definitely recommend, you could strong, you can definitely use language of saying, those, you know, we, we strongly welcome those that have been vaccinated and we are looking together as a community to create a safe space and so on and so forth. There are things that we can do for sure. Uh, in addition, yes, we sh there should be some legal counsel. Again, I don't know who that is and how that works on the city uh, agencies and stuff. But it would be silly to, you know, to, to say everyone come back without having any guidance or any recommendations uh, related to vaccines. We're waiting for uh, guidance from the Department for the Aged, for the Health Department. You know, some places have mandated vaccination notices, but, you know, the colleges are, the air the airplanes are, I don't know. I don't know. The ball games are. Uh, right. Uh, the impression games. I have it where we're going in that direction. What's that? Mandating vaccines. If you want to be a public citizen, <laughs> you have to be responsible. And uh, yeah. So would we be able to say you have to show your card when you come in? If you don't have a card, then you're taking grab and go and you could have your lunch outside. 
I, I can't speak on the legal perspective, but yeah. I, I think these are the questions that need to be asked to counsel. Shuli, you want to say something? Mm. No, no, I was just going to like, I was just going to repeat that I'm not sure that le what our legal um, allowances are in this. I'm not sure as a city agency, and I'm sure we're going to get guidance from the city what we can and cannot say. Um, of course, it would be easier. I'm wondering if certain activities could be high touch activities, if they could be restricted only to the vaccinated. But I'm not 100% sure, again, on the legality of that. Yeah. So for the grab and go, it's less problematic, though. Right, right. Richard, any other thoughts? Or I guess I read this as much in two ways, and one big part of that is kickstarting a better and more inclusive planning process. Um, do I do I think we should be going step by step? Yeah, grab and go being the first step of that. Um, and I guess I should be saying we as well as I. Um, that's the main thought. There's this blank wall we seem to be coming up against. And that's something we need to get past. Um, the couple of yeah. the times that I've seen CB, um, Yosef's question was on target. The times that I've seen CB12 take leadership on something, I think we've had real, real impacts that were worth the effort. Now, do we need to sign something, um, Mary, if you have a, is there something for us to sign on to? Well, I think that, you know, what I want to do is breathe through um, what, you know, Fern and Richard were able to, put, you know, put together because, you know, as representative of, you know, not only the committee, but of the senior center, um, the senior centers and, uh, you know, kind of look at look at those items um hold on just a second uh i just want to allow the attendees i've got a couple of attendees that want to speak let me do that and then we'll come back cheryl yes hi um okay thank you for letting me um speak so as a senior myself, uh, I even though I've never, you know, really gone to senior centers, but I understand, uh, you know, where there are a lot of elderly people and they really need that socialization. Um, what what to me irritates me is that um, while I understand that there needs to be guidance, there needs to you can't just throw everybody back into a senior center. Um, but from what I've been reading. Uh, a vast majority of the seniors have been vaccinated uh, in New York City. And um, to me, it's like, how is it, how is it, um, uh, um, I can't think of what I want to say. How is it um, not an issue for the governor to be uh, just taking maximum capacity off of indoor dining? Uh, to me, when people are sitting at a bar, how is that? How is that different from letting seniors to go back into a senior center? Um, you know, to me, it's always like the elderly seems to be the least disenfranchised. Um, you know, and it's not right. And I applaud everybody for what they're doing. Gail Brewer and uh, Fern Hertzberg. I did see the uh, news clip. I did see her. Um, along with Mark Levine, I believe Council Member Mark Levine was there as well, right. um, supporting this. And uh, I think it's something that really, a uh, really, um, I, I, I don't know who it would, it would need to go to. I, I believe that Gail has been um, pounding the drum to Mayor de Blasio to uh, get this going. So being, I think, I don't know, senior centers are, are under city, not under state, um, I believe. So, um, yeah, so I would think that this is something that um, people need to be, uh, you know, voicing to the mayor that this is, um, you know, because they're opening everything else, Broadway in September and, you know, uh, no crowd limits at arenas and sports stadiums in the next couple of weeks. 
And yet the seniors are just, well, who cares about them? And it's yeah. not right. So I, I greatly support what you're doing, Mary, in um, getting these senior centers open. Thank you. Yeah. Listen, and and getting and having the gyms reopen. Gail was like, Ugh, about that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> everybody I mean, breathing you know, on what's everybody. The importance of the gym over the senior centers. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, I agree certainly with Cheryl. I just maybe I'm naive. I'm not attributing these negative things to why senior centers are on the last of the line. You know, again, maybe naive. Um, and I'll accept that, but I, I think seniors are the ones that most, you know, have passed away, mostly died, and they're the most vulnerable. So I understand that they may be the last on the list rather than we're forgotten, but I may be totally nuts. If that's, you know, I, I would tend to agree with Alana on that, that the fear is coming from a place of a fear of liability, but I really do think that that it is time, especially since the seniors were the first ones to get vaccinated. I think That's right. that their level of readiness to, and, and we have to consider their mental health too. And right. we all know how hard it's been on all of us mental health wise, seniors especially. And that's a big part of their health puzzle also well, when you're talking you know, about liability. I mean, I'm a senior and I know how I dealt with, you know, you know, came back from, you know, my time away and everything was closed. And I said, oh my God, you know, what am I going to do? And of course, what I did was end up, you know, adopting two cats. <laughs> so, you know, took care of my depression. Um, <laughs> let me just uh, have one more person, Dr. Gary. Let's see. Yes. Go Hello. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Hi, Alana. Hi, Gary. Hi, Fern. Hi, Fern. Hi, Alana. Uh, hey, Fern. How, how are the seniors? Hi, so, Gary. For, for those of you that for those of you that don't know, uh, we we partnered with uh, Alana and Riverstone, and we created a program called Youth Engaging Seniors, which was called Excel Alive Inside, where we brought music into the Riverstone Senior Center in a collaboration for a couple of years. How, how are the seniors doing, uh, Alana, that we worked with? That, well, I, I can't tell you specifically. I haven't seen a living soul. Okay. So that was my question. So Riverstone is totally closed, the senior center, the second floor. You have no, <laughs> no one's allowed there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we go in periodically and we see some clients. Yeah, but we're basically closed on the premises for on-premises services, yeah. And so, oh, and so actually, let me say that citywide, all senior centers are closed, period. And only staff, if their organization permits it, are allowed on premises. So, 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 so why is it that like childcare centers that you, you know, like had to have you know, children and the seniors that are, you know, emotionally stressed and dying and should be living, they weren't allowed to be like, you know, like a first responder, like teachers are first responders for kids. Yeah. So why because, wasn't it that? Gary, most of the, you know, the vast majority of people who died were older adults. So there needs to be a little bit of uh, extra caution in my opinion, but now right. is the time to start moving forward. Uh, you know. and, and the seniors, our team um, in our community got thousands of seniors yeah. vaccinated. So uh, my board member, for example, was saying, okay, let's go with vaccine passports. If you were vaccinated, you can come to the senior center. Let's keep the masks um, until everyone is comfortable that no masks are needed, but let's move. And grab and go is not what people want. Right. What people want is to socialize, as I'm sure you understand. So Fern, let me yes. ask you, as we were talking about this, we don't know if it's legally allowed to say, come in if you're vaccinated, don't come in if you don't. That's where we're that, at. So that is actually up to the Department of Health to determine, but that was my board member's suggestion for um, yes. easing, easing the stress and the concern um, to have staff who are not vaccinated continue virtual work from home if they can to furlough people who are not able to do their work 
if they don't come in and they're not vaccinated, but to address it and move forward. This stagnation for the last few months is insane. Every call from every senior that we get is, when are you gonna open? When are you gonna open? When are you gonna open? So from my point of view, give us guidelines and let us do what we do best. Yes. Sorry. And so, I got to say, so, I just want to say that, you know, at I that you guys press conference. My connection. I don't know if it's. Uh, so I didn't hear you, Gary. Go ahead. Right. Okay. So, Fran, Fran and I, we, we spoke a few months ago about a creative idea a while ago. Like, even just to one thing that I had the idea about with Fern was at least to start to give them some type of music or, I mean, I agree that in terms of why can't we just do it one at a time? If there's five seniors that can go there safely with one person, isn't that better than none? I mean, can't we, you know, like that's how we work with the youth, one at a time. If we, if you could help one person and see them in person and they're, they're voluntarily coming, uh, I know there's a whole bunch of legal issues, but um, I would just like to say that, you know, if there's any way that, that we could help in terms of, uh, Fern, we discussed like an idea of at least to give them music. So right. the way that one of our programs works was that we downloaded musical playlists for the seniors and we gave them headsets. Uh, obviously, I don't think that that substitutes for, you know, being in person, but they need help. And music is, I think, one of the best ways to help them. So if we had a team of youth that could load up the headsets in collaboration with the Summer Youth Employment Program. And then we were able to at least interact with them virtually until we could do it in person and then give them headsets. Of course, that's all about funding. Uh, so that's one idea. The other well, idea I have I is uh, related to, um, I'm not sure when the vaccines are gonna be done at the Armory, but they used to be- They're done. Go ahead, Frank. Mm -hmm. The, the yeah. vaccines are no longer at the armory. They're at the Winter Garden and the Children's Hospital. So the armory is not being used for vaccines anymore. Okay. But Gary, send me, okay, so send my, me, you and yeah, I are so friends on Facebook. Gary, Gary. Uh, Gary. Yeah. Send me, uh, uh, message yeah, on Facebook. You and I are already friends Sorry, on Facebook. My connection's unstable, but go ahead, I'll stop talking. Send me a message on Facebook so you and I can follow up because we're doing conference calls with the seniors with music and I'd love to include the kids. Okay, oh, that's great, that's great. So just my, my last suggestion, if you could hear me, was that at a distance, if the, if the seniors could at least get some exercise and walk around the track at a distance or get some, you know, they could be six feet apart and they could start to move a little bit, or you could go from Riverstone and just walk down the block and just get some, you know, uh, exercise or just, you know, see each other. You could do it at a distance. Again, maybe a crazy idea. I'm just trying to do anything we can to get them out together. No, no good for them. Gary, I don't a, think it, I don't think it's crazy at all. It's a good I, idea. However, it's a really good idea. However, I think at this point, from what I understand the city is saying, They'd rather see us do stuff in the park than see us do stuff indoors, period. Okay. Well, if you need any help with that, um, you know, and you know, we're doing a summer youth employment program this summer, so we'll be in touch. And if there's any way I could help, um, you know, my mom has Alzheimer's. You know how passionate I am about helping the elders and um, right. anything I could do to help, um, let's reconnect. So thank you for letting me speak. Nice to see everybody. Good to thank see you, Gary. You. Thank you. Okay, so so Mary, is, is the plan to, to, to put a resolution out? Is that the plan now? It's 1142. Okay. So, um, excuse me, Mary, uh, Tanya's had her, I see Tanya has her hand up. I don't know if anybody saw it. I think Tanya had her hand up. Did you want to speak, Tanya? Oh yeah, uh, thanks, Carol. Yeah, yeah. I, you you're welcome. I put my I, <laughs> yeah. Just very quickly, I, I just wanted no, no, it's okay. Um, I just wanted to, um, you know, I understand people are talking about the legality of it because it is it's not a lot of consistency, right? Like the school where I teach, the college where I teach, they're requiring all the students to be vaccinated unless they have a documented medical reason or religious reason. They're required to be vaccinated. Um, um, so it just, it, it seems to me that there, you know, that needs to be worked out in terms of that. 
but I do think there is a, a, a liability on both sides. Like I say, if you don't require people to be vaccinated and someone gets it, then that's a legal issue as well, you know. But, you know, I think it's something that's worth moving forward regardless. Just find a way to to be able to service, you know, the seniors to get things moving, whether it's, you know, um, you know, the the to go program or if it's just opening up senior centers to the many as many people as you can legally, you know, I think it's worth considering, you know, but it is to me, it's like people are making these individual decisions. I don't think there's a lot of consistency in terms of decisions about requiring vaccination or not. You know. There isn't. <laughs> I agree. Okay. And I have creating one guidance. I mean, I can't make that decision myself, but I, you know. Okay, Alana, hold on. I just want to check with Maria Luna and see if she has anything to add. I'm sure she does, but I'm going to try to limit her time. Maria? Maria? Mute. Okay. You have anything yes, to add I, quickly? No, 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 no. I just wanted to, when okay. you're all talking about the seniors coming and going and whatever it is. We have to make sure that the home attendant, if they have a home attendant are vaccinated, I have been working real hard to get people to be vaccinated as Ferns knows, Al Taylor's office knows. Uh, a lot of people that are resistant to do that, uh, they are home attendants. So I need to protect these seniors. I love to see them dancing and, and listening to music. This is not only the only thing that we need to, we need to protect them. And that is my, you know, uh, something that I need to, and fourth, uh, we all wanted to have, a, I mean, including myself, I would like to go out, I like to go and listen to music and jump on the street and things like that, if that's necessary. But that I need to make sure that not our senior, including, I, I lost four people in my family, four people mm -hmm. last year, and including like this year, three people on my, you know, my family have died. And they were really, uh, you know, this is very upsetting to me to hear that everybody wants to go back to the senior center. It is important, but we need to make sure that they are the ones that are, uh, you know, protected by us. We are protecting, uh, you know, our seniors. As far as uh, dancing and jumping and music is concerned, uh, even, even the religious institution, the churches are being, you know, uh, being uh, concerned about having most of the seniors go to churches. Uh, so they, they really, uh, you know, I mean, I, I just don't want to jump into the thing and then go back and say, listen, this is what's happening. I'm sorry, but this is my, uh, my concern. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. I agree. I agree, Maria, that we do it slowly. We're gonna do it slowly. We have to make some decisions. We have to get some guidance about vaccinated, not vaccinated. Um, and then start with the grab and go. I, I, uh, unlike some of you, I believe grab and go is the way to start. And one more, one more thing. I'm sorry, but uh, about the interaction between the young people and the and the elder and the elderly, we need to make sure that the young people are also vaccinated. How many are they vaccinated? I mean, when was that initiated? Uh, recently, the governor and, and the mayor they all jumping, uh, you know, killing each other on the television, uh, and they are they are really really not thinking about the ramifications of having people on the street when the young people are not being vaccinated. So I just, uh, I, you know, I will keep them away from each other. Okay, thank you. So I think the way to go at this point is for me to read what, you know, Fern and Richard were wisely able to put together. Um, I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can, I don't know. Fran, you have an idea what the best way to do this is? Um, I would do a screen share. Richard, do you have it in a way that you can screen share it? I have it. I don't know if there were any edits after I left, but it, I have what's close to. Um, I don't have a lot of experience with screen share, but I'll try. You should um, I don't have any Ebenezer. Is Ebenezer still on this call? Yes. Ebenezer? Ask him this. Can you set it up for screen share for Richard? For Richard, yes, one second. Thank you. Okay, 
want to be needed. Then. <coughs> there you go. It's on the bottom of your screen, Richard, a green button. Mm -hmm. Should they already be up there? No, it's not. Did you did you click on there you there go. go? There it goes. All right. That's that's the best way to do it. Okay. So if you would read it, please. You want me to read it, Mary? Go yes. Ahead. Whereas there are nine senior centers in community district 12, whereas over 10,000 senior citizens are served annually by local senior, also known as older adult centers. Whereas senior center buildings have been closed for 14 months. Whereas offices, restaurants, gyms, and other gathering places are being reopened. Whereas seniors are often living alone and or isolated from family and friends. Whereas senior centers meet a wide range of needs and connections for their members and participants and connect them with additional critical services. Whereas many seniors live in food deserts and or face additional challenges in obtaining and preparing healthy food. And here's the core of it. Whereas the mental, physical and nutritional well-being of older New Yorkers is at growing risk from the continued closure of senior centers. Further, whereas seniors throughout the city are speaking out about the impact that these closures are having on their lives. Whereas Live On New York and Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer are providing leadership to amplify senior voices. And for a little bit of fun, whereas Mayor Bill de Blasio is himself becoming his senior on his birthday this Saturday, even though that isn't exactly what the resolution says. Whereas senior center providers have not been engaged in a sufficient planning process for senior center reopenings. Whereas seniors at sites that are not able to scale up quickly for reopening risk being left out of the benefits of partial services, partial service and full reopenings. And that's meant, that's in there meant to walk that line between grab and go to all the other things that we may do step by step or fully. Therefore, Community Board 12 Manhattan urges Mayor De Bill de Blasio, the Department of Health and Mental Health, and the Department for the Aging to address reopening senior centers as a matter of urgency and to engage senior center providers in the planning for immediate reopening. <coughs> Mary, you're on mute, honey. Sorry. <laughs> um, okay. Um, Comments from the committee. Everything looks good. Um, I think it's a good resolution and we should pass it. Obviously I wrote it and I support it. So, uh, or actually Richard wrote it under my urging, but I support it and I believe in it because I think later is worse, not better. Any uh, tweaking of any of the parts? Can, uh, this is Maria, can you combine mm -hmm. the whereas or it says the mental, physical, and whatever is growing risk of the, and then the next line, seniors throughout the city, uh, the impact that this closure having on their life isn't that saying the yeah same? that can be that can be one whereas uh-huh which one uh, what numbers are those for uh, i can't tell they, let's see. richard they don't have numbers but it's about two-thirds of no, the way no. down richard just do it just go into it oh, okay. and yeah. combine them you is can there do a place it while we're online 
Okay. Is there a place in such a uh, document to say we need guidance from the Department of Health in terms of vaccination, no vaccination? Because that's what information I, we need. Is that appropriate to put in here or no? Probably not, because this is coming from the community board. We know that the Department of Health, you know, has to. All right. right. That's why the therefore is to the Department this, yeah. of Health. Right. Okay. Okay. Did you make the edit, Richard? Um, I lost the screen. I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll make the edit on the original copy and send it to Mary. Okay. Okay. Any other issues on the resolution itself? The reason I'm um, trying to finalize this is because I would like at Richard's suggestion that we present it at the executive board meeting on May 17th, I think. 17th, I think it is, yeah. Um, because I feel we feel it's a more urgent issue than waiting for the full community board. Um, I will, you know, run it by the chair of the board, Eli Bueno, and uh, try to set that up. So, let's what take I'd a like vote. to do. Let's take vote. a vote on the resolution. I was going to say let's 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 move to a vote. Okay. So, committee members, Glennis. Yes. Richard. Yes. Yosef. Yosef? Maria? Yes. Carol? Yes. No, where you are. Carol, Carol Weeks, sorry. Carol Weeks, are you there? Fern? Yes. And I vote yes. I vote yes as well. I'm sorry if, you, if I could, didn't answer before. That's okay. All right. Um, community board members, Tanya. Yes. Olga. Mariel. Old tab, JAWS Pro, old tab, post attendee, old tab, please. Somebody sign needs to mute themselves. Lilia, think, uh, is that you? I think it's Lilia. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. My came up. Marielle, are you still on the call? Marielle, Ellie? Okay. All right. Other folks that would like to vote, Shuli. Shirley? Yes, Ilana? I vote yes. Okay. Ilana? Yeah, yeah. Lady? Yes. Lady? Sorry, did you? Lady? I said yeah, yes. Okay, sorry. Uh -huh. Um, Dr. Gary? He had to sign off. He just sent me a text. Oh, okay. Liliette. Yes. Gloria Vanderpool. Probably have to unmute these folks. Let's see. Uh, Richard, could you unshare your screen? Thank you. Let's see if I can figure this out. Uh, Gloria. Gloria.
Gloria, are you... Gloria? Hello? Hello. Okay. You've heard all the discussion. We're voting now. Do, I'm voting you... for it. Yes, I think it's an excellent. Okay, and thank you for joining us. Thank you for um, being. Uh, a very important meeting. Verna. I don't think Verna can vote. Oh, I understand. Sure. Can you hear me? Yes. I can hear you. Okay. <laughs> but I don't think you can vote on this. You're right. Oh, no, um, I cannot. I yeah. cannot. Okay. Um, Cheryl. Yes, yes, and yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good job, Cheryl. <laughs> so raise your three hands, please. <laughs> Let's see. I think that uh, Bernard Grobman was on, but I don't think he's on anymore. And Albert Bianco also is not on anymore. Let's see, is, is there anybody on that I haven't called on that wants to vote? I think I got everybody. All right, so it passes unanimously. Awesome. Thank you, Fern. And uh, I'll send out the final version to everybody. That's been on. That's on on the uh, call. Okay. Thank you so much, Mary. I really appreciate it. I jumped on real quick. I'm in the middle of writing my RFP. I so know. I need that's to. Jump. I wasn't sure if you were going to get in at all. So I didn't think I'd make it, but I got a text from Richard saying, "Please <laughs> set aside a few minutes and and join." So right. I did. Um, just if you'll give me, bear with me one second. Truly, uh, Alana, thank you for your quick response. And truly, please send me your response as well. Okay. I will. I will. Do we need some kind of linkage with this community board? Is that something to do? We could do one with CB12 Aging Committee. That would be good. Draft something and send it to Mary. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, that's what I suggested to Alana. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, great. Do, do you want to write it or you want me to write it? Um, I hate to give you more work, but I think you're better to do than me. I don't know what even to say. All right. Well, I'm churning out linkages left and right, so I'll do it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Fred. Okay. Bye. The lady the lady put in the chat that that's a good idea. I miss you. I love you. Thank you. And thank you, Tanya, for joining us. What a treat. Talk to everybody soon, and I hope I see you all at the Waikoa conference on May 13th. That's I what see I was you gonna, yeah. Nice just, seeing you. Just I have that on my uh, just for your announcement list. We're having a on the site staff meeting on Monday for the first time, just to let you know. Awesome. You know? Awesome. Yeah, what, we had 60 people in front of the senior center on Tuesday for the picketing, oh, and wow. we got citywide coverage. I know there was a lot. You're listen, Mary. Mary was the star of the TV programs. <laughs> I caught Channel Eleven and Channel Two, and Mary was but right up there. <laughs> even on Forty Seven, although they started with Desalina, the one who spoke in Spanish, uh -huh. they followed up with Mary in English as well. Okay, cool. <laughs> My sign got on Channel Eleven too. So awesome! <laughs> Thank you all. Thank all right. You. Um. So we're going to, the rest of the uh, agenda, you know, discussion about the capital expense budget will be on next month's agenda. We uh, just weren't able to, with this new uh, discussion, uh, able to get to it. So that'll be on next month's agenda. And uh, so we're ready to close the meeting, I think. Yes? Yes. A second? Second. Okay. Bye -bye. Take Thank care, you everybody. Thank Thanks, you everyone. all for joining us. I'm glad, you know, to see such a great turnout for this meeting. I Thank really you all. It. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you. Thank you. I say Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Thank the you.
to all of you also.